He's refused to respond to repeated petitions, petitions brought uh, to the judiciary and brought to him directly through the uh, full page ads, which copy you have. And I sent overnight a letter to him last uh, few days ago indicating to him, please respond. This is not about you, I said to him. It is not about uh, your uh, political ideology. It is about nothing but the Constitution and your eligibility. Please respond. And there's been no response. There have been other lawsuits filed besides Mr. Berg's and Mr. D'Onofrio's lawsuits aimed at the electoral process. As you know, when you vote for Mr. Obama or Mr. McCain, you're really voting for their electors, their state electors. And they're certified now by the governors of every state. And they're scheduled to cast their votes on uh, December 15th. And then on um, everything else being equal, the, uh, on January 6th, at a joint session of the House and the Senate, they will count those votes unless there is one member of the House and one, at least one, member of the Senate that objects, in which case they'll collapse the joint session and go back to their respective chambers to deliberate and vote whatever they de uh, determine to do. And then, of course, on January 20th, everything else being equal, Mr. Obama would be sworn in. So focus, there's a lot of focus on the electors now in the country. And one of those lawsuits, uh, the first one, was brought by the Justice Foundation, United States Justice Foundation, on behalf of another person who was on the ballot uh, for president representing the American Independent Party, Alan Keyes, and two of the electors in that state. And one of the attorneys representing them, besides uh, Gary Creep, is uh, Orly Tates. Orly, would you tell us about the facts of your case and your legal arguments and the status of the case? Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Do you mind if I'll be sitting? I guess I don't have standing to, just like uh, <laughs> everybody else. But my clients do have standing, and uh, that's something new in my two cases. Can I interrupt? I, I've been curious. I'm sorry. Um, you have an accent. Yeah, Can you I explain that? Sure. <laughs> I'm often trying to ask you. Uh, yes, I'll be happy to. I was born in Kishinev, which is former Soviet Union. And I have to tell you, one of the reasons I'm so up in arms about this case, because during this election cycle, the media in the United States of America was worse than media in communist Russia. Absolutely <laughs> worse. I have to tell you, uh, because I could see program after program, all of the anchor men and anchor women uh, were reading from one script. They might have had different haircuts, they might have had different suits, but they were all talking like zombies, the same script. And the facts of the case are very simple. In my opinion, anybody with an average IQ, with a IQ of 60, can understand. And the only reason majority of U.S. public does not know the facts of the case is because the media was intentionally aiding and abetting Mr. Obama in defrauding 300 million American citizens. That is the reason why I'm speaking out, and that's why I brought those two legal actions. Uh, um, another thing that I would like to clarify, actually, Mr. D'Onofrio uh, didn't want anybody to talk about his case, but I talked to him just recently, and he asked to clarify one, one thing. In he, there were two cases submitted that the Supreme Court is already um, reviewing. One was Donofrio v. Wells, and uh, another was Rankowski v. Bezenich. Uh, Donofrio's case came from New Jersey, and he had a procedural hiccup. What happened in Donofrio's case is that uh, the appellate court judge wanted a motion for leave to amend to include stay. And he asked for the stay. So it's possible that that was the reason why the Supreme Court um, have, uh, has denied his motion 
t for stay, whereby he needs to go back to the Supreme Court of New Jersey and file a motion for leave to amend his original claim in order to have a stay. And that's what he wanted me to clarify with you. Uh, another issue that he wanted to clarify is that he, um, he de facto brought two cases uh, and he worked very hard with mi Mr. Ratnowski and his case is much stronger. It is currently in front of the Supreme Court. It was not denied. Uh, it's active. It's pending. And uh, hopefully a Supreme Court uh, will hear his case. And I wanted to clarify, my case was not dismissed yet, and God willing would not be dismissed. Uh, and um, actually, I have two cases. I also wanted to clarify, I'm not part of uh, American uh, U.S. Justice Foundation. Mr. Creep is a U.S. Justice Foundation. We have se uh, separate offices who work separately, but we are just uh, cooperating on, uh, on one of the cases. Uh, and that's uh, Keith versus Bowen. And the other case, um, Lightfoot versus Bowen, uh, I'm the only attorney on the case. And uh, what is special about those cases is that we have plaintiffs. Uh, until now, we had only attorneys filing lawsuits. And what the uh, uh, media, mainstream media, was doing, instead of actually explaining the facts, they were attacking the attorneys. And they were saying, well, this is just some crazy, a couple of crazy attorneys bringing cases, which I think was nauseating to see. Well, um, here in Keith v. Bowen, I have Ambassador Keith, who was a U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations uh, um, Economic Committee, and he was Assistant Secretary of State of the United States. Uh, Mr. Drake, uh, Wiley Drake, is a vice presidential candidate on the ballot, and Markham Robinson, who is an elector and who is a chair of American Independent Party of California and a vice chair of America's Independent Party out of Michigan. So you, if any of you in mainstream media thinks that these people don't have standing, then God wouldn't have standing. <laughs> So uh, those people clearly have standing. Uh, and the other case, actually I have one of the plaintiffs who made a trip uh, from California. Um, uh, the second case, Lightfoot v. Bowen, the uh, first plaintiff is Gail Lightfoot, who was a vice presidential candidate on the ballot uh, for Ron Paul. Mr. Neil Turner, if you can please stand up. Uh, Mr. And I, I questioned uh, Orly also. I said, uh, you're from Russia. I said, you can't be president. He said, no, but my choice is that. <laughs> well, I have been thank you, Mr. Turner. Um, and um, uh, we have uh, four electors that are plaintiffs in this case. Uh, and just to give you an idea, um, we have um, Kathleen Flanagan. She's an elector. Mr. Turner, who is an elector, and not only that, Ms., uh, Mr. Turner is a veteran. He served seven years defending this country. We have Mr. James Obenshine, who is uh, a certified elector and also a veteran of U.S. Air Force and a Korean War veteran. He's also a retired engineer from Central Atomic and General Dynamics Corporation. Camden McConnell who is uh, uh, also an elector, and uh, he is a chairman of Libertarian Party of Contra Costa County, retired Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel from U.S. Army, graduate from U.S. Military Academy at West Point, veteran of two tours of duty in Vietnam, and a senior structural engineer. We have Pamela Burnett, who is a captain in U.S. Army, temporarily retired, and Evelyn uh, Bradley, who is a former school principal. So ladies and gentlemen, these are not uh, a couple of uh, attorneys. These people uh, represent this country. And I've been corresponding with a lot of regular voters, regular citizens. One of those um, people have helped me with a blog, and within 10 days, 
the rate of hits went from 100 a day to nearly 3,000 a day. So many people are concerned about this fraud being perpetrated uh, on the citizens of this country by Barack Obama and the media. Absolutely outraged. Uh, and I would like uh, Mr. Obama to look in the eyes of somebody like Mr. Turner, who risked his life for this country, and tell him arrogantly, as he did until now, that he wouldn't do as little as sign, take one minute of his, his time, sign a consent form, and say, I, Barack Obama, consent for release of all necessary documents to prove my eligibility. How hard it is to do. This man risked yes. his life for this country, and all the other people on the loss, in this lawsuit did so.